Welcome back to the channel everybody. We're out in the large greenhouse. We caught ourselves a toad. There's plenty of toads to go around. We have lots of life in the greenhouse. We are usually leaving our doors wide open. So whatever comes in and whatever goes out. So keeping it as natural as possible. Today we are not talking about toads. We are talking about comfrey. I have a little bit of comfrey in every stage of development really but before we get started please hit that like subscribe notification bell if you have heard of comfrey and even if you have not really hope everybody's gardens are doing well at this time we are well into spring we've got row after row of crops outside the greenhouse now so we are just steadily cranking plants out of the greenhouse for sale and for planting so hopefully everybody is having as much success as we have found this spring we have been doing pretty well it was a very early spring usually we'll have a frost all the way into early June sometimes so remember two or three years ago we had a frost on June 5th and it killed all of our tomato plants and that was pretty detrimental so being lucky enough to have a early spring with no late frost is awesome it really helped us crank these plants out of the greenhouse well, let's get talking about comfrey here so I have several stages of comfrey growing so we've actually got some wilted leaves there but this was just sitting in some water kind of mulling over this is a large chunk so here we have a little stick this is actually a rhizome you can see little tiny growths those are going to be green growths they must have been facing the sun and then we have all types of roots coming up these are actually new root growths so this is just a rhizome out of the ground we had dug up no different than the other rhizome here so this one is fresh and this one has been sitting for maybe a month in the water and it really didn't throw a whole lot of roots off it just kind of soaked up the water so this is one of those plants or propagations that putting it directly into soil is going to benefit it a lot more than just using water to propagate even though it does have a lot of growth there we could get a lot faster growth because this is the same exact looking rhizome so I took this rhizome here almost identical and I cut it up into about one inch maybe half inch pieces so I cut all of this up and just chunked it up so I let all of those little chunks sit in water for about a day or two and then I was able to basically just come in here and plant them all up this container does not have any holes in the bottom this has just been sitting in a dark corner of the greenhouse you can see all types of root growth that is actually quite interesting there so I haven't really checked on this this is kind of just a little experiment I know I'm ripping a few roots here and there but this is very very hardy stuff so this is what kind of roots we're looking at coming out of the soil there and that barely even took any soil with it that was just pure fresh new root growth so you can see how it looks when it comes out the top so this is Bocking Comfrey number 14 does not produce viable seeds so we are able to just propagate tons and tons of these and keep them in their location so we also have seed producing comfrey I think it's number four or something like that don't quote me but we also had that and it started to really really readily self seed so we kind of just got rid of that put it by the chickens and just kind of let them tear that up even though they don't get rid of it they will eat it up and just kind of tear it down and and graze it basically and keep it at bay and keep it from flowering and that is what we want all of these flowers on number 14 Bocking Comfrey are very very pretty they are good pollinators brings a lot of bees in kind of like borage does so it's a great pollinator it's a great dynamic accumulator so there's a lot of good benefits and we'll get into all of that I just wanted to show the experiment I had grabbed some comfrey flowers from out at our pear trees and We've got all these little chunks. See, this is about a one inch little chunk. Basically the same thing as we're looking at there. Just has a whole lot of growth to it. I just want to check this out and see what all these look like real quick. I'm just going to check one more. So this is basically the same thing. Another, maybe this is about a one and a half inch chunk, but you can see all of that root development. You can see all the green vegetative growth. And this is a super simple way to propagate all of that comfrey. This just really, really set it off here. We have maybe 15 or so comfrey little starts in here. So this is really cool. Very, very small little rooted cutting there. This is maybe only the size of a pencil and about an inch long. And you can see all those roots. Very interesting stuff. Hopefully it's not too bright here. So so those rhizomes that are readily able to be propagated are also a great rhizome barrier they are not going to allow your grass and weeds and stuff to penetrate through 
they form a really, really good fence line. We use them on our chicken fence. We use them around all of our pear trees. We're trying to propagate them to all of our apple and cherry, every tree, because this is a great dynamic accumulator. It's pulling minerals and nutrients and dropping them for the next plant to eat. So we are basically feeding our food forest, all of our fruit trees and shrubs and stuff, all the berries. We're feeding all of that with comfrey and we're feeding it with free wood chips. All of those free materials, able to propagate tons of comfrey for free so we are just accumulating all of those resources as a free source of nutrients and food for our plants and we don't have to do any work other than just chop and drop this comfrey has a carbon to nitrogen ratio of 80 to 1 and after composting it is basically 10 to 1 so it's a great activator for your compost and it also feeds that compost and feeds whatever plants you are putting that compost on as a top dress so what is a dynamic accumulator so that just means Means that it is pulling all those minerals and nutrients. This comfrey is high in iron, silicon, nitrogen, calcium, potassium, magnesium, and many other trace minerals. So it is great for your ground. Comfrey used to be used for humans also. It found that it is not good for us over time and it is phased out. We do not see comfrey in any medicines anymore. Our chickens love to eat it in small quantities and they ration themselves off of the whole plant. So they know better, but we did not. So we as humans had to learn that comfrey is not good for our liver when taken in high quantities over time because the alkaloids build up and create lots of problems in our liver and they can lead to a lot of serious conditions and even death. This is our number one food for the whole entire homestead, our perennial and annual plants. I, I state a lot that we just plant them by all of our perennial trees and just let them do their thing, chop and drop. But on the other hand, if you're a good composter or if you're new at composting, growing comfrey is really gonna aid in that composting process. And that potassium that is contained in your comfrey and the compost as a result is very, very beneficial for your tomatoes, peppers, and lots of other annual crops. So getting a good compost pile for your annual crops and having that nice bacterial compost as opposed to a fungal compost like most of ours is with all the wood chips and stuff like that, we gotta keep some type of bacterial compost separate to Feed all of these crops free is a great additive to any compost pile no matter how or what your compost I tried to keep this video short and sweet and if anybody has any more questions about comfrey or anything I talked about or the process of propagating these or anything any questions at all feel free to drop them in the comments I'm just gonna continue to pull all these out and plug them into pots and about half of them will be potted half of them are going to go to brand new trees. we've got some currants June berries elderberries we've We've got all types of berries we've got some nanking cherries we've got to get comfrey planted around all of those so just planting one little rhizome will start a good plant and you will be able to have that plant for a lifetime and you will be able to propagate that out and it will slowly grow a new shoot here or there every spring but for the most part that comfrey stays put where it's at and that's why I liked it and it is a very very thick rhizome barrier so digging those rhizomes up cutting them into little pieces and basically propagating them all out for free is the best way to do it because we're able to put it right where we want it and just feed that plant naturally for a lifetime so I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video and a huge shout out to all of my subscribers and all of the new subscribers I've gotten lately we are on a roll and I know it's summertime most of our content is really winter related and I'm trying to get out here and show everybody what we're doing the ease of propagating and some simple tips and tricks to get a lot of things going and trying to think ahead and plan those things out with your food forest and all those good things so I'm trying to touch on all that and I'll be bringing a whole bunch of videos throughout the summer but it's not going to be compost heating so hopefully everybody sticks around till next winter and thank you guys for watching